Hi guys, so another video today in my main stage for musical theatre tutorials and this is something that uh, people have been asking for a lot recently um, and even before when I made my other videos is the harp glisses, um, triggering them live, uh, playing them live or triggering pre-recorded harp glisses. Um, we're going to be using the scripter plugin, the MIDI scripter plugin uh, in main stage today and with that comes two scripts um, that you can download, you can purchase. There's a script by Matthew Poole and a script by 441K. And both of those we're going to be using today uh, to get this to work in our performance for shows and for pretty much anything else that we need a gliss for. Now, you'll probably see quite often in particularly musical theatre parts things like this uh, and things like this. Now, two different kinds of ways of writing those um, glisses. In a sense, you've got the scale whether it's major, minor, whole tone, for example, uh, here. That sort of thing, um, you can pre-program in the notes that are in that scale and play just a C major white note gliss, and it will change the relevant notes to the notes we need to have in that scale, in that major scale, that whole tone scale, that whichever scale it is. Now, another way of doing it is uh, to have a similar sort of process but have one individual note on the keyboard trigger a gliss in its entirety without us playing every single note that that gliss would involve. Um, and that becomes much more specific. You have to set the time that you want it to last for, the tempo it's going to be at, uh, but it does give you a great deal more creative choice over the gliss. Um, and we're going to just dig into a bit of that a bit more today. So let's head over to the main stage and we'll have a look at what we can do with these scripts. <laughs> So I'm here in main stage now, uh, I've got a new concert open, harp places, I've got the harp patch, just the standard harp patch as it comes with main stage and the standard harp channel strip here. Um, now if you see down this channel strip we have the MIDI effects slot. So if I select the MIDI effects slot and we're going to choose scripter because we want to use scripts. So you choose scripter and you agree with this. Um, now this includes an editor for you to create your own scripts um, if you wanted to. It uh, allows you to open other people's scripts. So it's so great, so many things you can do with this one plugin. Um, and today we're going to use the two scripts I spoke about. So all you need to do is download the scripts at the links below. The 441k uh, script you need to purchase, but Matthew Poole's script um, is free, unfortunately his website isn't available at the moment, so you may just need to email uh, the email that is on his website at the moment um, for contact um, as it's being renovated or redone or whatever. Um, but the script still remains, I'm sure. So once you've saved it into the correct place, which is in the music folder, audio music apps, plugin settings, scripter, um, they will show up here. Once you open main stage after you've done that, Go to this drop down menu here where it says factory default and you'll see the two scripts uh, that I've described below here. Now we're going to start with just harp pedals, that's the Matthew Poole script. Um, when we open that up we get this, we it with this and when I initially opened this it was a little bit confusing, I wasn't sure what I was supposed to be doing with these drop down menus. Um, some of you may have picked it up but basically these are your notes of the gliss and you can change whether you want them to be natural, flat or sharp. And that's as simple as that. So at the moment they're natural. If I run, you just get a C major harp gliss. Now if we want to tweak it, maybe we want a D major. we we'll go F sharp and we're going to also go C sharp. And in doing that, we've changed every C that's going to be played into a C sharp and every F that's going to be played into an F sharp. So to play live, we still play that C major white note key gliss. And we get a D major sound this time. Um, this one, this script is as basic as that. That's it. You change the notes, you play a white key gliss and you've got the changed notes. Um, the thing with this one is it's much better to be playing live um, in a situation where you've only got a gliss to play. So something similar to this sort of thing. Um, because if you're trying to play this whilst also playing another part, this gliss might get in the way of that other part that you're playing if you're playing two-handedly. Um, 
so in that situation it works well but otherwise it might get a bit tricky when you're trying to work it in with other parts and in that situation this next list uh, next script will come in handy so that is the Matthew Paul script. We open up the 441k heart glitch trigger script now. And you're greeted with this. Um, and you will be familiar with this. This is exactly as we had in the other script where we have the different uh, notes and change from natural flat and sharp. Let's go back to a, a D major, F sharp and C sharp. This is going to do the same thing. Change our C naturals to C sharps. Change our F naturals to F sharps. It's exactly the same idea. Um, but this extra menu at the top here actually gives us more um, customizability in a sense uh, of what we can do with that and if you notice if I try and play a whole a whole glistener it sounds horrible uh, that's because each individual note is triggering a whole gliss in itself and we don't want that in this scenario we want one key to trigger this whole gliss so that we can have one key and not a whole group of keys being involved in that gliss because the we might need those extra keys for the extra part. So we trigger our, choose our trigger note. So at, so at the moment it's set to all notes and that's why when I did that full gliss, every single note triggered a, a gliss and we don't really want that. Um, so say we go with a C3, which on this keyboard should be, there we go. And you heard a D major gliss there. Um, what you'll notice though is it doesn't sound quite right and that's because the gliss was starting on a C3 which would have become a C sharp 3 and ending on a C5 which would become a C sharp 5 so it's a D major gliss beginning ending on C sharp so let's set those to D3 and D5 instead and you should get a more standard D major gliss so that's that first section your trigger notes and the start and end note of that uh, gliss itself then your tempo so this is where it's not as useful for live because particularly in musical theatre there's no guarantee that uh, you will always be uh, at the same tempo every performance every song so in that situation we need to um, use the other the other uh, script really but this one can be useful because it's a ballpark figure you know roughly how fast the song is going to be and it will work in most situations uh, so that's your tempo now for the gliss duration uh, that's the thing we can change uh, related to the tempo. So one beat in 120 uh, is going to be that fast. Say we wanted to take it to oh, one, two, five, uh, two beats. Slightly slower. Pretty self-explanatory. And the slower we take this, the slower the heart will be. So you know roughly how fast a song is going to be. It will do the job, particularly on the faster glisses where we've got the glisses that are sort of that sort of speed. They're all generally that sort of um, sound anyway, so it, it will work. Uh, your start velocity is showing that it's the, the, the harp will uh, grow in dynamics as it gets through. So if we take this right down. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, velocity curve, logarithmic, linear, that's whether it's a, a steady velocity curve or whether it's a gradual um, kind of sweeping curve, um, linear of course being the steady one. So uh, that's, that's basically what you've got there. And then this here just changes the, the actual steepness of that curve or the uh, speed with which the curve increases and decreases essentially um, so yeah this one gives you a lot more choice there to work with uh, in terms of um, start notes end notes tempo gliss duration just just it gives you the ability to be much more precise with your glisses uh, whereas with the other script um, if we jump back to that one we had a um, C sharp and an F sharp <laughs> You know, whilst it's less precise, it's a lot more playable. You can choose the velocity and the speed and everything yourself. Um, and it just really helps to um, have much more control of the performance of it. But as I said before, there's a lot of situations where that just um, isn't necessary compared to the usability of just one single note for a gliss. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. Um, that is really all there is to uh, the glisses themselves. Um, 
if you were looking to use this first script here, this very simple script, to simply trigger a, a, a glyph with one note uh, without purchasing the other script, um, what you would need to do is play the glyph itself at the speed, tempo, uh, velocity that you are wanting and record that glyph, chop that down and turn that into an instrument. That's a whole other uh, sort of thing that I'm going to look at next is using your own samples um, to create instruments in EXS24 uh, and other sorts of plugins and that's really that sort of level of editing that we're looking at there. So we'll get onto that, um, that will probably be the next video and that's really what's involved with that. So we'll look at that later. But yes, hopefully that's been helpful just to begin on harp glisses um, and thanks for watching. Thank you.